Greetings, buddy boy, and we're throwing another bone for the Inventor beginners out there, the ones that have just never used Inventor before, have no idea what to do, but they just want to follow someone doing something, and then at the end of it be like, ah, oh, I've got a model, that was pretty cool, mate, that was cool as balls, let's do another one. And then the more you do, the more you learn, mate. So I'm not going to explain why I'm doing stuff as we go, I'm just going to do it slowly, and then you can click where I click, do what I do, and then follow me along, and you'll get a model at the end of it. And we're doing a wine glass, mate. Now, I know crockery and tableware is not inventor's speciality, but it, it'll introduce you to a few of the defaults, that sort of standard, basic modelling tools, as well as dipping with toes in and flirting with a, a little bit of advanced stuff as well. So before we get cracking, make sure you've got the same setup as me. I'm using Inventor 2019. So some things might be a little different, buttons might be in different places, absolutely no I can do about that mate. But we're going to go file at the top, go to options, go to the file tab, and then click configure default template and make sure you're on millimeters in ISO. And then uh, go into projects, this button here, and then it doesn't matter which one you've got ticked, but go to the panel below, expand appearance libraries, right click on Autodesk appearance library, and then activate that, so that's black and bold. And then go to material libraries, and then make sure that one, their Autodesk material library, is activated. If they're not there, mate, I don't know what to tell you. Your, your installation's not good. Uh, the, the, the files, Autodesk material library and appearance library should be at that path there. Uh, uh, further than that, I, I, kinda, I don't know what to tell you, mate, if they're not there. They should be, though. All uh, right, click done. And then we're going to go to new, and we're going to go to this one here, standard.ipt, which is a single part file, mate. Right, let's get cracking. So like I said, I'm not going to explain why I'm doing stuff. I'm just going to do it, mate. So click sketch, uh, expand the origin folder, and we're going to go with the XZ plane here, or this one here. So we're going to give that a click, and then that should drop us down a sketch. Swing the camera around so we're looking face down. So I'm going to click this little arrow here on the view cube. And that's just going to spin it around so Z's pointing up. And then we're going to start sketching some stuff out, mate. Now, with Inventor, uh, I'm using the, the CAD mouse, which has got a, a middle wheel, as most mouses, the, mouses, mice these days have. Uh, press the middle wheel, you can pan around, uh, scroll the middle wheel, you zoom in and out. And then I'm going to, when it, when it comes to orbiting, sort of 3D orbits and stuff, I'm going to be pressing F4. Right, that's F4 on the keyboard, and then hold down the left mouse button, and then that sort of orbits around like this. Right, let's get back to, I've just thrown the camera angle off. Well done, Neil. Right, I'm going to select the top face here on the cube, and that should, oh God, it's pretty Z's through that way. Right, let's click this arrow again, right? We'll, we'll get there eventually, mate, right? Let's get cracking, we're, we're, we're good to rumble. Select the line at here uh, on the create panel. So line should be blue. And then we're going to select this button here, which is center line. Click the yellow dot in the middle. That yellow dot should be there, unless you've been tinkering with settings, mate. That yellow dot should be there. Give that a click when the circle goes green. When the circle goes green, that means you've snapped onto it. It should be pretty obvious because you can almost feel it jump onto it like that. It's like an AutoCAD object snap. Move the mouse up until it snaps to the, the vertical. Again, you, can, you should be able to sense that it snaps to the vertical. And then when it's there, let go of the mouse, keep it snapped vertically, and then type in 155. But then press Enter on the keyboard. And you should have yourself a centre line, 155 long, mate. Well done. All right, spam escape a couple of times to clear the line command. And then we're just going to grab the text on that dimension with the left mouse button and just pull it away and then let go so, so it's out of the way. All right, then we're going to uncheck the centre line box there, that box button, so that's not blue anymore. Activate line again, and we're going to we're going to conceptually sketch out the outline of the wine glass, mate. With Inventor, it's not like AutoCAD. You don't use Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates and start drawing things accurate right off the bat you can do but you don't have to the easiest way to sketch an inventor is to just roughly conceptually sketch out a shape and then you put your dimensions on afterwards like this so let's click the end point of the center line move to the to the left on the horizontal till it, the lines roughly you can see the dimension there going up and down till it's roughly like 40 ish doesn't matter how like you could you, we could do this 100 and something but you get it roughly where the size is that you got You know you're going to put on later, uh, and we're doing. This is an ISO standard wine glass, mate. Who knew? Who knew there was an ISO standard for wine glasses, right? Whilst the line's still activated, it should let you continuously draw a line here. So we're going to come up on an angle to about here. If you roughly want to get where I'm at, just look at the dimensions on screen now. When I click the left mouse button and just get it roughly, roughly about the same point. Then we're going to go to about here. Left click, move up on the vertical. To about here give it a click and then we're going to come across here click read press escape <clears throat> activate line again and then we're going to click the end point of the center line 
move to the left, click, escape. And then we're going to go into the create panel and we're going to activate three point arc. So you're going to drop the arrow down underneath arc and select three point arc and your three points are going to be there, there, and then roughly, yeah, make, make sure it doesn't snap for the, for the arc, but roughly about there yeah, that'll do and there you go mate you got yourself a rough sketch of a wine glass now we need to put some dimensions on press escape press dimension and then uh, this is where we're going to start dimensioning points to lines and lines to lines and whatnot so the first the first dimension is going to be this point here to the center line and what inventor does is it goes ah mate you dimension into a center line i'm assuming with my infinite wisdom that this is a, some sort of circular feature you're going for so it puts a diameter dimension for your delectation and delight and we're going to make that 70 and i'm like yeah mate you were right about that and the second one's going to be up here so we're going to click that point to this center line click we're going to make that 46 and then we're going to select this line to the center line so these are that's two full lines not a dot to a line pull that up to about there the placement really doesn't matter like genuinely doesn't matter because these don't appear anywhere these aren't dimensions that appear on drawings these are properties this is like saying i'm gonna make that center line 155 long its length property is 155 and it just displays that via what looks like a traditional dimension uh, right then the next dimension is going to be click that line there then click that line there pull away and then we'll make that 20 uh, we'll go that line there to that line there. We'll make that 110. Press return. We'll go uh, this point here to the center line. And we'll make that 65. 65. And then uh, we'll go that point. No, we'll go that point there to the top. Uh, we'll click that intersection there and we'll make that 100. And then finally, I think the last dimension is the radius of the arc. So just click the arc, pull away, and we'll make this 290. And then press return. And mate, mate, look at that. Everything's gone dark. Everything's gone dark. That means it's all fully constrained. What that means, <laughs> like, mate, I don't know what I'm doing. What's fully constrained mean? All right, spam escape. All right, so nothing's activated. Fully constrained means when you grab the lines and left click and pull on objects they're not going to move anywhere so there's dimensions everywhere everything is at a size and fixed distance from something else there's no movement in the sketch all right we're going to click finish sketch all right inventor does this thing that infuriates even me to this day which it zooms in way too far so we're going to use the middle wheel to scroll out then press revolve on the create panel at the top what this does is it goes right Revolve looks for a closed profile, which if you've come from an AutoCAD background is like a hatch boundary. It's a, a closed region, and that's exactly what we've got here. This profile of a wine glass is created like a closed boundary. So it looks for that, and then at the same time, it also looks for a center line to spin it around. So you click Revolve, it finds the two of them, and it goes, mate, you've only got those two things in the whole model. I assume you want to use them together, which we do. And then you just click OK. And there you've got your first solid mate. Well done. Well done. We're not quite finished yet, but we're, we're, we're over halfway there. Right, hold down F4, left mouse button, and then we can spin this around and make the wine glass upright. And then middle wheel just to pan and zoom so you can fit it into the window roughly about there. OK, right, so the next thing we're going to do, mate, is we're going to put the fillets on to get rid of those sharp edges. So uh, let's go into fillet here on the modify panel. Give that a click. And um, we're going to change the radius of the uh, the first line here to be 0 0.8. And then we're going to select this bottom edge here. Give him a click. And then zoom and orbit and pan up to the top. Give the top edge a click. So those two edges there are going to be 0 0.8. Click to add here. We're going to add another fillet. And this one's going to be 10 millimeters. And then zoom in. Click that stalk there. Stalk, the, the edge of the stalk bottom and that oh, doesn't that look good that does look good and then click that one there make sure you don't accidentally click edges that are behind that one there and then we're going to go click to add change this radius to 22 and then we're going to click that there that one there and then oh look that doesn't look good right change the type here to a g2 change that one there to a g2 and then change that one there to a g2 click apply 
And uh, oh my god, doesn't that look good? Yes, that does look good. Right. Next thing is we are going to uh, we're going to shell this out, mate. We're going to shell it out. So we're going to select the uh, shell command here on the modify panel. You should see it's a very small button. Give that a click and uh, remove faces. We're going to zoom in to this face here. Give that a click. Zoom out. If if you if that didn't work for you, make sure this button here is unchecked, automatic face chain, or else it'll pick up everything because all the faces are joined together with the fillets. So don't have that ticked, and then orbit around the bottom. Give that a face there a click. This one here, and I think that's it. I think we're good with that, mate. Click OK, and that's now shelled the glass out at a 0 0.8 mil wall thickness. And uh, what it's done though is there's a there's a gaping hole going through the wine glass because it's also shelled the stalk out, so we need to sort that out. So this is where we're starting to flirt with some advanced stuff, mate. We're going to select patch, and then we're going to orbit around so we can see inside of the glass. Now you should, if you don't see these edges, right, click view, and then change your visual style to shaded with edges because if you've just got shaded selected you're not going to see those black edges so yeah make sure that's shaded with edges so for boundary patch we're going to select this edge here all right and then we're going to just orbit around and look side on what that's going to do it's going to create like a like a lid it creates like a little face in that circular region there which is like it's like a cap over the hole but it's flat so we want it to be domed because like a wine glass the bottom of the wine glass is sort of domed isn't it so we're going to change this option here to tangent and then the weight will just we'll just leave it at 0.5. That should be enough. Should it be enough? Or should we change this to 0 0.2? Yeah, let's change that to 0.2. Right, click apply, zoom out, orbit around, click that bottom edge there again. Make sure you don't pick anything behind it. Make sure you go for the right edge because sometimes it can uh, it can get you. You think you're clicking on an edge, but you're clicking on one actually behind it. And you can see, there's just one there. That one there. That's the that's the rogue. You want to go for that one there. And then change the weight of this one to tangent. And uh, we'll leave that at 0.5. Click apply. Should look a little something like that. Click apply. Click done. And we're golden, mate. So the next thing to do is click uh, back onto the 3D model tab. Select sculpt. We're going to select boundary patch 2, boundary patch 1. And that's like pouring water into the stalk. And then the water gets caught by the faces that we've just made. And then it creates... Mm, yeah, I wasn't expecting that to happen, mate. <laughs> that's that's not the end desired result that I was going for, so we need to fix this. Let's uh, right-click on Fillet 1 in the browser, and we're going to go to Edit Feature. And I think what's happened here is, as we've created this stalk, fi the filled feature for the stalk, the fillets have failed, and it's removed the rest of the wine glass. So this is, this is standard, mate. It's part of the modeling process. Things break, and you have to just go back and figure out what they were. And I think it's probably... Uh, this fillet here. So we're going to change the middle fillet, the 10 mil one, to be uh, a tangent fillet. Click OK. Yeah, and that's that's brought it back. So we're now good. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> a bit of a scare, but we're uh, we're good. And there's the wine glass, mate. That's it. Actually finished. So we need to make it made make it to be made of glass. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so we're going to go into the materials. Uh, select this little drop down here at the top and then you can change this to be glass frosted or just glass and then you can see it's gone see-through if you want to make your own just so you can play around with it your own kind of colored glass we can select this little button here which is called appearance and then we can go to make sure this doesn't drop off the end of the screen select this button down here which is creates a new appearance slash texture select solid glass and then we can start changing around with this. Give this a name. Call this wine glass. And then for the information, again, just change the name. Or most of these fields here don't actually mean anything. They don't do anything. You can't search for them. They don't appear anywhere else. They're just inherited from another part of Autodesk's ecosystem. Uh, solid glass. It's going to be the color. Well, you can go to. You can either make it green or gray or blue, or you can go to a custom. Select the the middle bit here, and then you can give it like a custom, maybe like a rose gold sort of tint to the glass. Click OK, and then uh, apply. Uh, cancel that. Shut that down. And then now, when you drop this list down here, 
you should see at the very bottom there's loads and loads and loads of textures because this is the Autodesk appearance library. Remember, we set that at the start. Uh, and then we can go to wine glass, which should be Christ, there's so many of them. There it is, wine glass. And it's just made it pinky mate. There you are, look at that, it's great, isn't it? So the next thing to do is uh, we're going to select the front face of the cube. Right, so that you should see it says the word and it's upside down. Right click on the face. My, my menu is going to shoot off screen, but you want to select set current view as front. And what that does is it makes the front of the cube uh, look like that. Press F4, orbit around. Uh, go to the view tab here at the top. Change the visual style to realistic. Change the shadows. You know, drop down there. Click all shadows. And then we're going to go to uh, this button here, orthographic, change that to perspective. Drop this one down here. And we're going to change this to grid light. <laughs> Look at that, man. Look at that. There you have your wine glass, mate. And it looks absolutely beasting, right? The next thing I would have normally done is enabled ray tracing. I'm going to do that at the end of the video because when I'm doing screen recordings, ray tracing just all the cores on my computer just get dedicated to ray tracing so my screen capture software just completely just gets eviscerated and everything goes out of sync so i'm not going to do that i'll do that at the end but um yeah there's your wine glass mate you've done it it's made a glass if you want to check the weight of it for example you can right click on the part here the part icon go to eye properties go to physical hit click update and because we've said you're made of glass there's an accurate mass representation and uh, volume surface area and well done mate you've now got you might have been thinking to yourself all along i've no idea what i'm doing i did say that at the start but you've got yourself a wine glass uh, and if you're thinking to yourself but i want to put some liquid in it inventor's not inventor doesn't do liquid it's not its speciality you can create at some point in the future i'm not going to do it in this video but you can create a solid to represent water but that's not what inventor does inventor is not supposed to be you know fluid dynamics kind of thing it's just not its thing there you go mate there's your wine glass it looks absolutely killer uh you, it's also full fully adaptive you can go into the original revolution here and change the sketch and you can change any of these dimensions and the whole thing will update to suit so like for this uh arc here we can change that to be 200 just to make the wine glass a little bit fatter click finish sketch and you should see it poof updates to suit but there you go, mate. Thank you very much. That's that's your wine glass. Once you've done that, if you want to if you want to save it out, just click File Save. That'll create yourself a, an IPT. We can call this wine glass. And if if you've got a three D printer and you want a three D printer, you can go to File Export CAD Format and then change that to STL. And then that'll drop that out as a as an STL file for you to three D print. So. Thanks very much. That's uh, that's the wine glass done and dusted, mate. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a beginner inventor, hopefully that is giving you a little taste of how to model. And uh, if you if you're not new to inventor and you watch this, well, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you, mate. <laughs> well, well done for sitting through something as as basic and entry level as this. Uh, thanks to everyone for all the support on TFI. I do get asked quite a lot if people like to uh, if people want to donate to the channel. Links are all in the description as per. Uh, Patreon is and I'll see you in the next video mate thank you very much Toodles.